to get us going, um, familiar sight, I guess. I stood outside our office uh, last week in, uh, in Grayson Road in London. It took me maybe two or three minutes to capture this image um, of a guy walking past. If by some freak occurrence he's in the room, I apologise. I've used your data. But <laughs> the, point, the point is this. Hands up in the room. How many people walk down a street um, without looking where they're going? I have. Right? Pretty much everybody. Very familiar sight. Us consumers are kind of attached to the mobile phone. It, it's with us everywhere we go. So I thought that was quite poignant. More interestingly, I took about four or five photos of four or five people, and nobody noticed. Mm -hmm. Why? I took them on my iPhone. Pretty normal occurrence. A guy standing with an iPhone. No big deal. So I thought that was a good way to kick us off. Mm -hmm. But before we maybe talk a bit more about mobile research, it's probably good just to take a step back. Um, if we look back 20 years, most research was done either via the telephone or it's done face to face. And if we think a bit more about the man hours which were involved in doing that research, um, how many people uh, had to sit in a catch center, how many dials they had to make, um, how many street interviews had to stand on various different street corners in different cities across the country, uh, to get, to get the, the surveys that, that we needed to do. Both of those methodologies were very slow and very expensive. Absolutely. But we had the internet then. We had a new dawn. Uh, Richard and I have, I think, been around long enough to remember when uh, the online uh, kind of element of market research came through. And it really was a new <coughs> dawn. We had the situation where we didn't have to pay people in a call centre to make 100 calls to capture an interview. All we had to do was burn some internet traffic to sign people into a panel. Once they're signed in, we've got them. We've captured them in advance. So it all of a sudden became so much faster and so much more cost effective to do research. There have been some methodology debates over the mm -hmm. years. I think those debates still rage. Um, but you can't deny that online has been the savior of market research, right? Mm -hmm. Um, but now we're seeing increasing challenges with online research. Um, so I guess key amongst that has been the decline in email response rates. You know, if, we, if we look how many people now access social media, um, instant messaging, and their mobile, via their mobile device, um, it's ever increasing. Probably a good, a good way of looking at it is looking at people tweeting today um, about MRMW. Um, I'm sure there's been significant tweets done this morning just on the presentations. Um, so the way that people are actually engaging uh, is, is changing, uh, and very quickly. Absolutely. So the modes have changed, but the challenges stay the same. So if people are changing the way they behave, surely the way that we research them needs to change as well. So that made us think. The, uh, the most precious gift you can give someone is the gift of your time and attention. Great quote. Pick this up off the internet, very easy. So if we think about <laughs> us as human beings, we, we're constantly being asked for more and more of our time, whether it's uh, the Coca-Cola brand trying to engage us on their Facebook page, or whether it's in-store advertising, or th th there are hundreds of thousands of data points. Mm -hmm. Going back to uh, Mick this morning from Vodafone, um, he was talking about the matrix and this kind of this concept of big data and how do we how do we capture that big data and make sense of it? That's not just an industry thing. That's a consumer thing too. How do we make sense of our Twitter feeds, of our Facebook feeds, of our emails, of our messages, of our blogs? How do we get to grips with that data? We're, we've been pulled in so many different directions as consumers that sometimes it's really hard to know where to devote our time and sometimes it's hard not to be distracted by what's going on around us. So the golden nugget for research is, is getting people's attention. Essentially, how do we get people to take surveys? Right. So for us, um, how do we buy their time? Engagement. Everyone's talked about engagement for a long time in this industry. And, uh, sorry. Be right back. Text message. Someone's asking me to take a photo of the audience. One second.
Can everyone smile for me? <laughs> Great. <laughs> Let's go. <coughs> okay. Sorry, what was I saying? Uh, I think he was talking about engagement. Okay. Um, this is um, some data which we got from uh, a recent study which we ran. It was about 600 uh, adults in the, in the UK, and we asked them various questions uh, about how they interact with their mobile, how often they use it. One of the actual scariest stats which, which came from it was that 6% of people would rather live without their significant other as opposed to their mobile device. Um, now, I'm not sure that what that says about um, their relationship or, in fact, our respondents. Um, <laughs> But I think it just really emphasizes the point that people are increasingly married to their mobile phones nowadays. And just some more stats from, from that study, um, just to really emphasize that point. So 70% of people, when they're asleep, the uh, phone is either in the bedroom or within reach of their beds. People are using the phone um, before, well, before they go to sleep uh, increasingly and as soon as they wake up. So again, it just really emphasizes that point. So this really poses some questions for the research industry. How do we get high quality mobile responses? So I'm re-engaged. I'm back in the room now. Sorry, I logged off for a second there. <laughs> um, it's about user experience. Um, so even taking this presentation, I'm, I'm trying to stand here for 20, 25 minutes. I'm trying to concentrate. And my mind wanders. I want to go on Twitter and take a photo. You kind of get the idea. How do we engage with users uh, or, or I should say, re-engage. So mobile, and we've talked about the attachment to mobile, then if we attach user experience to that, and it's a fun experience, it's a fun environment, it's reasonably fast, it's reasonably easy, people are not going to get distracted, they're not going to go on and do other things. That then starts to lend itself to better quality data. It sounds obvious, absolutely, but sometimes the most obvious things are the most important things too. So for us, user experience is one of the key elements of good quality data when we're talking about mobile. So we spoke to our panel, and we asked them quite a few questions. Um, now, I'm not sure that what that says about um, their relationship, or in fact, our respondents. Um, <laughs> but I think it just really emphasizes the point that people are increasingly married to their mobile phones nowadays. And just some more stats from, from that study, um, just to really emphasize that point. So 70% of people, when they're asleep, the uh, phone is either in the bedroom or within reach of their beds. People are using the phone um, before, well, before they go to sleep uh, increasingly and as soon as they wake up. So again, it just really emphasizes that point. So this really poses some questions for the research industry. How do we get high quality? Take a survey. And we've just talk, spoken about the fact that people are on their phones. I've got a great anecdote of convenience as well. Uh, this comes from uh, my wife. We, were, we moved house two, two months ago. Uh, the pans were still in boxes. We had no food in the house. We're going to get a takeaway. So we did a quick Google for the name of the local Indian takeaway. Found their website. Could not get on their website. Very frustrating. We tried the phone. Couldn't get on the website on, on the phone either. We gave up. We found another website we, we ordered from, from somebody else. Missed opportunity for that Indian restaurant. It was only two weeks later I realized why. We used an iPad and then an iPhone. Their mobile, sorry, their website was built in Flash. We couldn't get on it. So by a simple thing like not thinking about how consumers are moving, that particular restaurant lost our business that day. How do we relate that to market research? I think the, the message is pretty clear. We have to be where the consumers are going. Third thing, um, why, why, why mobile? Easy? Sure. Interesting? Sure. Fun? Sure. Sounds obvious again, but this is what our panel is telling us. We have to listen to essentially what is the lifeblood of our work. If we don't have people giving us this feedback, we have no industry.
take a survey. And we've just really to emphasise the point, 55% against 42 said they would actually prefer taking a survey on a mobile device. That, that tells a story. <coughs> So this one, this slide is actually almost a little misleading because it was quite a, a tricky, long survey that we ran in parallel. Um, so we saw a response rate on a mobile being double what it is online. Typical mobile studies where it's mobile only, it's shorter, it's cleaner. We've seen 20, 30% response rates on mobile versus a typical 5% response rate, rate from online. So that kind of, again, re-emphasizes the point. In terms of data quality, um, three kind of typical mobile studies where it's mobile only, it's shorter, it's cleaner. We've seen 20, 30% response rates on mobile versus a typical 5% response rate, rate from on online. So, well, so we had a high amount of brand recall in the moment versus online, but also their confidence in recalling brands was higher. So the question about how confident are you that you have recalled all of those brands on that particular shopping study or wherever they were. Their confidence was much higher when they did it in the moment than if we asked them online. And I think that's pretty significant when we're talking about how confident we are in the data that we're delivering to our clients, how confident our clients are in making decisions about branding or packaging or promotions. We should be more confident in mobile data. Satisficing um, or generalization. So, there was less generalization on mobile than online. And I'll give you um, or generalization. So there was less generalization on mobile than online. And I'll give you an example of that. So taking my home life again, I go shopping every week. Wife, kids need to go to the supermarket. I may do that twice a week. If you ask me, have I been shopping in the last three months, I'll say yes. If you then try to understand a specific experience, it's pretty hard for me to recall that because it all gets blended up together with another experience, another experience, and another experience. If you're asking it in the moment, it's very clear. You're talking about that particular shopping trip or that particular experience rather than it being kind of without so much confidence unless you do it on mobile. And the really interesting thing that we found then is social desirability or without so much confidence unless you do it on mobile. And the really interesting thing that we found then is social desirability, or uh, as I call it, um, frankly, <coughs> dishonesty. So um, we found that people taking an online survey had more need um, to feel socially desirable. And what that means is they, they had more need to, to, to feel like they had to answer it in the correct way, as opposed to on mobile, in the moment, they're honest, or they're more honest. They're more straightforward, they give you quick answers, they move on. Um, you talk about cognitive versus incognitive. Mobile is more incognitive, more cognitive. Straight with us, and they're saying mobile is better. We don't feel so under pressure to give the correct answer. We're giving our true feeling. One of the surprising things which, which came out of this comparison was the fact that people are actually more willing to give verbatims via mobile than they were uh, via online. Straight with us, and they're saying mobile is better. We don't feel so under pressure to give the correct answer. We're giving our true feeling. One of the surprising things which, which came out of this comparison was the fact that people are actually more willing to give verbatims via mobile than they were uh, via online. Um, so we can see here with the, with the open-ended word counts and the percentages. Um, and one thing which also came out of it as well is that people are really interested in taking videos, uh, recording audio as a way of um, giving those responses as opposed to just typing it out uh, on, on a PC or on a, on a laptop. So I guess with all types of research, design is everything and, and mobile is no different. When we were asking the questions about what people liked about mobile research, one of the things which they were really keen on was the rich media. So being able to take photos, take videos, scan barcodes, do research on location. So variety was really everything, and I think that's something that we need to remember as researchers 
uh, when we're designing surveys for people to do on mobile phones. So that leads to the next question, how do we ensure good data quality on mobile? <laughs> so first thing we need to do is learn from our past. There's no magic bullet. Uh, there is no perfect solution. So we've talked up until now about engaging with our audience and making sure that we are getting the best out of them. But you will always have people that will try to cheat the system. That doesn't matter whether it's a focus group or a piece of telephone research or online or mobile. There will always be people that will try and get a quick reward, that will try and get through the survey quickly because they've got other things to do. They're going to log off and tweet a picture. So aside from the engagement, as an industry, we also need to put measures to make sure that we have confidence in our people as well. So there's two ways in which we can do this. So there's the recruitment stage, uh, when we get people to join the panel, and then there's also the management side. So a couple of things that we're doing on, on the recruitment side is, uh, firstly, source testing. And this is tied in with the registration, scoring, and uh, using algorithms uh, to analyze data as well. Um, so what we do when we engage a new mobile community, um, we actually benchmark that against data which we already have from other mobile uh, communities which we recruited from. So we'll ask people lots of attitudinal data uh, as well as their demographics, and we'll map that against what we already have. And if we see big swings either side, then it, it, it raises a red, red flag for us. Um, what we also do as well is onboarding. Um, so something we found really important is to actually, I don't know if train's the right word, but let people know what's expected of them when they join the panel. So in terms of if they're taking photos, the quality that's needed, uh, again with videos as well. Just really let them know what's going to be expected of them when they, when they join the panel and the research they're going to have to do. Um, also on the management side, so we put things like uh, red herrings in, in the surveys, again, just to catch people out, so creating false brand names. Um, and we also, um, we're going to talk a little bit more about this over the next few slides, actually, the, the geofencing and the rich media capture and what we can do there. So this is uh, a project which we ran at the start of the year for a client. Um, respondents had to actually be in store to take the survey. So we put what we call a, a geofence around uh, stores across the UK. Um, and as soon as someone walked into that, we pushed in a survey. Um, we got around 100 odd responses. Uh, as you can see, they're, they're throughout the UK. Um, but what we also did through a partnership uh, with a retail database, we could actually log the exact store which they took the survey in. So if it was Sainsbury's and New Cross or Tesco down the road, we could actually log that back to, to that particular store, which is a great way of validating people are where they need to be. What we can then do, um, and obviously some of this is through an app, so the app is controlling the GPS and is controlling the ability to take photos um, and scan barcodes. From the same project, we can then layer on more validation. Um, so, for example, Richard's uh, Sainsbury's and New Cross, he's buying uh, Walker's Cheese and Onion. He's in the bottom right corner, mm -hmm. you can see all the nail varnish. Mm -hmm. um, so we're able to get some context behind the human. Um, we're able to see that they're in a store. From this study, we cleaned out one respondent because the photo was fairly obviously taken in a kitchen, rather than actually being on location. Maybe they live in a flat above Sainsbury's and New Cross. But that's an additional validation layer that we're able to put on using mobile that's not possible in any other mode. Another example, um, we're running a study, I think it's live still, actually. Um, and again, it's kind of it's shopping behavior. And we're asking the respondent to scan a photo uh, or take a photo of their till receipt. So we're able to then double validate the address on the till receipt versus the GPS coordinate that we've picked up. We're able to validate the items purchased versus the barcode scan versus the images that they've taken. So we can then apply multiple layers of validation and then we know for 99.9% .9 certain they were in that store, they were purchasing those products at the time that we needed them to be doing that. So those are some of the things that you can do with mobile that you maybe couldn't necessarily do in any other mode. So looking at emerging markets, um, I guess still a lot of research done in the likes of India and China is done face-to-face. -face. Um, and with the explosion of mobile, 
it poses uh, some, some interesting questions, how we can actually utilize mobile in these markets uh, to do research. Love this picture. Um, and I thought some of the content from Jan this morning was interesting. Um, one of the, the slides said that 58%, I think, of people in India uh, don't have a phone that can connect to the internet. So their methodology is USSD. That makes complete sense. Um, but on the flip side, if we think about the way that emerging markets works for some of the, the bigger brands out there, the bigger brands are trying to push not only a brand presence, but an online presence. Market research is being pushed more and more towards online in those countries where it may be used to be face-to-face. -face. We're not so sure. So I've got this stat. Uh, this is from India, it's about a year ago, um, and already it's kind of scary. So it shows the prevalence of mobile internet versus desktop internet in India. It's already larger, a year ago. So maybe that's only the 42% of the population that Jan was talking about. But nonetheless, mobile, in terms of smartphone, is still more representative today in India than desktop internet, i.e. traditional online. So we wonder at USAMP, are we going to skip a generation or a methodology? Are we going to go straight from face-to-face, -face, straight to mobile in these emerging markets? I see no reason why we shouldn't. Um, smartphone penetration will never be 100%, absolutely. But it will be representative enough, we think, maybe in three to five years, where not only can we do more and more representatively, but also with the additional validation layers that we've just been talking about. So we genuinely believe that emerging markets, as Jan was saying, the trend should be towards mobile, and we should start to move there now. So looking towards the, the future, these are some of the things which we hope to release over, over the next uh, 12 months or so. Uh, so firstly, image recognition. So one of the things we're going to ask our panelists to, to do is take a picture of themselves when they sign up. And we'll ask them to update that over every three to four months we anticipate. Uh, in a way, it's just a, another way of uh, getting people to, to validate they are who they say they are. We're also looking at things such as automated photo coding and audio uh, transcription. And this is really to, to make analysis easier for researchers. The, I guess the, the thing we found with mobile research is it really marries both quantitative and qualitative in terms of the, the data which you can get. We can get large, robust sample sizes, but we also get really rich media uh, or data uh, from the respondents. So looking at ways we, we, uh, researchers can really analyze that a lot quicker and, and, and easier. Um, we're also going to do things such as dial testing. Uh, so this is an older methodology, but what it allows us to do is look at how people, or how easily people uh, can follow instructions, which is important when they're, when they're on a, a mobile panel. Uh, and finally, behavioral monitoring. So this is something which um, we, we can do now. Um, so let's just say, for example, you want to run a shopper study uh, next month. Um, and you can ask people to go in store and buy uh, a bag of crisps or, or whatever it would be. What we can actually do is track, uh, say, two to three weeks before that, and we can look at all of the, uh, say, outdoor advertising they've been exposed to, all the shops which they've walked past during that time, to really build a holistic view of that respondent. Um, again, just really enriching the data which we can supply to researchers.